I wasn't surprised because, to your point, Tony, it was absolutely an inside job. Like, unless we're talking about some James Bond version of David Dukes who was able to find his way with espionage into the garage, it was likely someone that Bubba Wallace has had interaction with or knows or at least is in his fear or in his cycle or circle, rather. Um, and I think that's the cruelest part of racism, that people can smile in your face and shake your hand and work around you or under you or over you, but underneath still believe that you should be on the bad end of a noose. Uh, I think as far as what's riding on this investigation, I mean, outside of the obvious that this is disgusting, that this is a terrorist act, that this is psychological warfare, not a whole lot, Tony. Honestly, I don't. I mean, you're talking about a sport that has so much deconstructing of their reputation to do. And I understand that their eagerness and their earnest. I believe Marty Smith and Ryan McGee when they say that NASCAR wants to make the changes to be a more inclusive environment. But you're talking about a place that just in the last couple of months had to deal with Kyle Larson calling someone the N-word on a virtual race. And, of course, just yesterday alone with the flag being flown, the Confederate flag from the crop duster, and then right. after that, right. the noose in the stall. But if you just go back a few years, you're talking about Richard Petty, who stands in solidarity with Bubba Wallace today, but just three years ago said that anybody who kneels would be fired. They'd be subject to not work for him anymore, should get out of the country. As far as I know, he hasn't walked any of that back. So there's certainly some great gestures that NASCAR is starting to, to make, but you're talking about a, a, a sport that is associated with the South that for many years has a reputation of being parochial, that just a few months ago had Donald Trump as their grand marshal. And for those that say, well, plenty of presidents have been grand marshals at NASCAR, correct. George Bush in 2004, Ronald Reagan in 1984. You do the math on what the connection is between all of them. I don't believe Barack Obama was ever there, but I know First Lady Obama certainly was and was booed in the stands when she went. So they can do whatever they want and say whatever they want and offer as many gestures, and they'll find this person. I have no doubt that they will, but their reputation, their well-earned reputation, has a lot to go. L. If I were to ask point blank, is NASCAR survival riding on this? No, to that? I don't think so at all. No, I don't think that it. Okay. I, I, for one, was shocked they were still running the race today. This is a threat against one of your drivers. Who's to say, okay, a noose was in his garage, that that person would have tinkered with the car in some sort of way? Because we've already established, well, this isn't just some random person. This is somebody in the garage. Not to mention, there's got to be cameras all over the place in the garage. Mm -hmm. I, I, for me to hear from NASCAR, we're not running a race, this race, until we get to the bottom of this right now. And we can do that immediately. That, that's what I'm talking about, the survival of the race. When you can't, the safety of one of your drivers is in play here, and that has to be paramount. El, you said something yeah. right as we sat down today talking about your father, a big NASCAR fan as well. Can you please explain Yeah, I mean, that? well, first of all, to your point, Tony, they're running that race because that's what black people do. We, we are faced with these sort of atrocities and injustices, and then we are expected to just go on and carry on. How did Tory Hunter feel after he had, you know, guns drawn on him in front of his own house after he was racially profiled and then had to go stand there and face a, a major league pitcher? Mm -hmm. Or what does it feel like when you're P.K. Subban playing in Boston and they're calling you the N-word and you have to perform at the highest level? But my father, who is a lifelong NASCAR fan and someone that I have implored, let me send you to a race. Like, let me use what little bit of clout or cachet I have to send you to a race and see it in person since you just stand here in the kitchen and watch it all the time. And I asked him what it would take for NASCAR to be as inclusive as they hope to be, that he'd feel comfortable going to a race. And he said they'd have to hold most of them in California and acknowledge that, yes, the Confederate flag will follow them to Cali as well. But his point was yeah. is that there is so much past here. There is so many examples here of why this was a sport that was parochial, where they catered and kowtowed to a particular crowd. And he said, they can't get to Bubba Wallace, but they can get to me. And that anger and that ire over that flag, they'll take it out on me. And I don't want to have any stain on this sport that I love so much by actually having the audacity as a black man to sit there in those stands and feel the hate and anger from the crowd, who may not be sporting Confederate flags, but still feel exactly exactly the same thing that those flags represent.